It is pretty funny though. <laughs> Everyone literally was just like, hmm. I feel like uh, PR year is over and then we watched it and then everyone was like, no, this is sick. <laughs> I ended the broadcast last night and then what did I do? What did I do? Well, let me tell you what I did. I spent the rest of the night looking at all the praise, looking at all the praise that I have received on my interview. Okay. And let me tell you, I've come to a very important conclusion. Are you ready for this? I like it when people like me and I don't like it when people don't like me. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I've decided. I am actually a fan of when people are like, hey, this is song guy. Sure is a nice guy. Sure seems to be a good dude. Maybe we shouldn't be so mean to him all the time. After all, he was a little he was a little kid at a certain point in his life. You know, he was a little kid. So if you're yelling at him, who are you yelling at? Really? Well, you're yelling at a little a person who was a little kid at a certain point. So, I mean, the interview has gone viral on TikTok, except for my own posting of the interview. My TikTok team is tic-tac-toe, dude. I, I swear to God. My TikTok team is basically Nancy Pelosi up in this bitch. We are old and we are slow. And when I upload my version of the interview on my page nobody cares but hey i don't really give a shit ultimately uh people are watching it people are enjoying it tic-tac-toe a winner baby i think it got flagged at first probably i was looking at the stuff of people praising me and it was making me happy i've decided i like when people praise me and i don't like when people yell at me so controversial opinion i know so please don't yell at me ever again don't do it it makes me very sad it was very funny seeing like respected journalists lose their shit at uh, the, the clips that came out of this interview, by the way. Like Mehdi was like DMing me like, dude, that shit was hilarious. I was laughing my ass off. Like it is funny to see like the goats, people that I respect a lot, like Zana from uh, Al Jazeera talking about how she now understands what the girlies on TikTok see in me. Honestly, dude, you should stop trying to be calm and collected and professional and respectable on live TV. Just be yourself. The one that blew up on Tyler Brokley is the one that'll get people listening. I don't like it. I don't like being that mean because ultimately it's not very productive because like the clip that went viral from me talking about uh, talking to Tyler Brokley was not necessarily one that had a lot of information in it. And I want to go. I want to have viral clips that are. Uh, that have a shit ton of information in them. You know what I mean? The people who care and get inspired by the clip watch the full newscast will be well benefited by your hateful clip. <laughs> it wasn't a hateful clip. I think a lot of people didn't understand like what it took for me to get there. And if you're confused by it, I recount the experiences here. I got so mad on Piers Morgan uh, where I go step by step and explain to you in real time and show you exactly what it took for me to snap. It wasn't like I was being unreasonable from the jump. It wasn't like I just came in there ready to swing. I was very cordial in the beginning of the conversation. The first 15 minutes of the conversation uh, has wonderful little factoids. You know what I mean? It's just that once Piers was also constantly going, do you condom hummus? Do you condom hummus? Do you condom hummus? Over and over again. When the last time I was on his dumbass broadcast, I literally did condom hummus. And he just refused to let me respond to this freak who I think Abby Martin did a much better job doing pack watch on. I saw a clip of Abby, friend of the show, my goat, Abigail Martin, who absolutely packed her the f up when she went on Piers' show in way better ways than I ever could. But she was railroading. But that's the difference. There's two differences here. Abby Martin, professional journalist for many, many years, well respected in the front however i think pierce probably respects abby martin a little bit more than me knows her a little bit better than me and therefore actually was giving a lot more space to abby pierce gives a lot more space to jank too when it's a 2v1 at least with this guy coming in with like the weird centrist position that doesn't add anything to the conversation you know i i, I got mad and I think that it was very cathartic from what I understand from the reactions that I've seen. It was very cathartic for the pro-Palestinian side to finally see someone just be like, dude, shut up. Like, why are you even here? You don't know anything about Palestine. You're just literally here to advance your own media career. This is not an issue that's important to you at all when people are dying. Like, just let the adults talk. I guess it's a take that uh, often gets lost. Like, I don't think people just tell others to shut the 
cup more, which is something I do all the time in this chat. Oh, it wasn't her. It was a different woman that she was cooking up. Is Emily Schrader. This is not her. Never mind. I thought Abby was cooking up the same lady. It's a different Emily, a different blonde Emily. No, I didn't actually see her in the TikTok that I watched. The TikTok that I watched was just her face and her saying Emily over and over again. So I thought it was literally like the same Emily. Someone described your bit as forgetting you weren't yelling at a chatter. And it's so true. Yeah. Well, so I think that like adults, children, people need to in sometimes get snapped back to reality. I think we... We live in very comfortable times in general, and the comfortable times that we live in has created a sense of safety for a lot of people and a, and a sense of entitlement for a lot of people, especially when they are using that entitlement and that arrogance to defend like something that aligns with the American State Department. And I think people need to be shook out of their position. Like, you can't, what do you mean? Like, you can't just sit here and lie. You know what I mean? You can't just sit here and assume like this weird liberal both sides in stance when there is a genocide happening yeah this is what i was talking about zana saeed uh not me finally getting with the girlies on tiktok say about hassan the hun this one went omega viral Ding. i do think it's funny because like i got real turkish with it it was super early in the morning so while the words that were coming out of my mouth were english my hand gestures got so turkish dude uh utilizing the hostages yeah i am being patronizing i don't know who the you are and you're over here chirping and get chirping all the way from london about palestine and doing a both sides are fine type bullshit where uh, you're talking about how you want to free palestine but also simultaneously you know both sides got a lot a, a lot going on shut the fuck up you don't know anything okay I literally I what i'm trying that's to imply very patronizing here. Uh, utilize it. yeah it's funny because like i cooked her up too in a similar capacity multiple times but i feel like that this one was so direct and so aggro that I feel like this was the one that everybody loved a lot. <laughs> I do, I do love the the anti-British slander. It's the British slander stuff. Yeah, yeah. The best part was when she just shut the f up for the rest it's of the show. The dissolution yes, of the right? my point It's correct. called the yes, dissolution song. of the apartheid regime. That's what it's called. Dissolve the apartheid so regime. So what would you like to see happen, Hassan? Breathing room. Allow. I. Do, do you not understand the English language? Dissolve the it's apartheid you can, regime. You need a Xanax, first of all. You need a Xanax. I'm it, proving my point. You need a Xanax, first of all. James tweeted this about it. New Edinburgh Edinburgh poster. Oh, he posted about it? You are being patronizing? I don't know who, who the f*** you are. Shut the f*** up. Damn, he posted about it. Congrats. I mean, I like I said, I'm a little upset uh, that he caught all the smoke. I died yesterday when you said, if I need Xanax, this bitch needs lithium. Yeah, I mean, she does. It is pretty funny, though, that everyone, everyone literally was just like, hmm, I feel like uh, PR year is over. And then we watched it. And then everyone was like, no, this is sick. <laughs> So many tell these industries to shut the fuck up. Most people are scared to do that. It's very refreshing when they're actually told that they're an idiot. Yeah, because here's the thing, dude. I've been called a terrorist and an anti-Semite for the past seven months for a position that I've maintained for the past 10 years very publicly. Yeah, it doesn't work, dude. It doesn't work. You can't just keep saying it over and over again and expect that, like, and hope that, like, uh, people will go, yeah, you know what? He is anti-Semitic, actually. Why is he anti-Semitic? Oh, because he's not dick riding Israel into oblivion and thinks that Israel is doing an apartheid, which it is. You can't do it. Anyway, here, let's see, let's look at some of the other bits and pieces. This one got a hundred and... Currently, tens of thousands of Israeli citizens right now, in the pro uh, right now in the streets of Israel, in the streets of Tel Aviv, outside of Benjamin Netanyahu's house, protesting every single day. What are they protesting? They're protesting for Benjamin Netanyahu to facilitate a ceasefire with Hamas so that they can actually bring the hostages home. That is precisely the but number one goal if, uh, of the family the members of the hostages. Who is and if using anyone the on this panel was no, being even a little question. bit honest, you, you they would recognize the reality that... Question. Listen, just listen. You didn't listen to my question. Listen to, listen to what I'm saying, and you will understand what I'm trying That's to imply very patronizing. Here. Uh, Utilizing the hostages. I am being patronizing. I don't know who you are, and you're chirping, up, chirping all the way from London about Palestine and doing a both sides are fine type bullshit where uh, you're talking about how you want to 
free Palestine, but also simultaneously, you know, both sides got a lot, a lot going on. Shut the f up. You don't know anything. I think you need to go har after Piers harder if you get the opportunity. His coverage is mixed, but I appreciate some of what he does. For example, bringing you on, he's definitely trying to get clippable moments from you. Yeah, he brings me on because he wants to get a clippable moment of uh, me saying something that can be misconstrued. And it's very frustrating. You saw Asmin's take on this? I did not. I did see a lot of people on the timeline yelling at him, though. 1.4 million views uh, TikTok about you right? and Piers. Yeah, I saw this one. Would you shut the f*** up? God damn you pretentious British moron. I have never heard of you. Shut the f up. I mean, he deserved it. I said I did it for Ireland. Yeah, I, I saw people on Reddit try to reframe this as like the dude with the pink hair being Sigma and I'm actually a crying soy jack and it literally didn't go anywhere because aesthetically it doesn't fit. So they're just like, they're trying their best out there. Shouts out to the Redditors. Hassan narcissistic meltdown. Yeah, exactly. Why were you on Reddit? Sometimes I go on Reddit. Yeah, D writers uh, trying to be like, guys, do not look at what is right in front of you. I swear to God, do not look at what is right in front of you. Look at this drawing instead. He looks like this drawing that's crying. He doesn't look like the way you see him on camera right in front of you. He looks like this drawing instead. Please focus your attention on the drawing where I've drawn him as an ugly man. Check Asmongold's tape because you're going to get a bunch of this narcissism arguments throughout the day. Yeah, I don't really care. That's why that argument is invalid. Well, that's pretty patronizing, isn't it? Yeah, I bet getting sunned like f with solutions to colonialism by someone whose people you fail to colonize would feel pretty patronizing, bro. Do you want a little bow tie and a lollipop to go with that British accent that makes you feel smart? Or are you going to shut the f up, sit the f down before I get the belt? Because you're literally my son now. Yeah, that's what I thought. True, the British never were able to colonize the Ottomans.